So now that you know a test is based around expectations, you'll need to start identifying areas in our code in which you're setting expectations. By doing this, you'll know exactly what kind of test you need to run. Imagine I have this function in one of my applications. It's pretty simple, it just adds two numbers together. And it would be called like this. The result of two plus three is five. Pretty simple. But despite the simplicity of this function, I've already set a whole lot of expectations about how this function will be used. Right off the bat, when calling this function, the first expectation I have is that the add function has been defined and it actually exists. In this example, it's pretty obvious. But what if I had this function defined in another file, like a library? This function wouldn't be so obvious anymore. Secondly, I have the expectation that the function is actually accomplishing our intended task. If this call were to return a different number, like 6, it would be a clear indicator I've messed up the actual implementation of the function somehow. Finally, I'm expecting this function will always be called as I intended, with numbers as the parameters. But what if I were to call this function with strings being passed in instead of numbers? I'd get the result 23, which you'll notice is also a string since the plus operator concatenates strings together. It's important to identify each of these expectations as early as possible, so that you can write tests against them, from whether the function even exists, to the output that is expected. This certainly isn't a comprehensive list of every expectation, but as you continue to identify other expectations or opportunities for a test, you can always go back and update your test suite.